All right, there you go. This is actually an image I found on Kaltura's brand. She did, Lisa did, did, doesn't even know that. Uh, but since we are going to talk about um, how to build a brand that performs, obviously I needed to use a few of Kaltura's brand aspects. So for those of you who doesn't, know, doesn't know Lisa, Lisa, maybe you can say a few words about Kaltura and about yourself. Sure. Uh, it's great to be here today. Thanks for inviting me and for coming out. Um, I know it's not easy to leave the house these days and actually go somewhere. Um, but uh, I'm Lisa. I uh, have been at Kaltura for a measly 17 years. Um, previously at the company called Sayota, which was acquired several times, uh, one after the other. Um, and I kind of started more in the world of PR um, and grew over time with the company. It's been a really interesting ride. Today, Kaltura focuses on digital experiences that are powered by video. So think webinars, virtual events, TV experiences, educational experiences. So we provide a very broad video platform as well as experiences around that to actually have engaging experiences for end users. We are B2B. Uh, we've got about um, 700 employees around the world. And uh, the marketing team is about 45 people, including uh, a great team of SDRs. Um, but it wasn't always that way, so we'll talk some about that as well. Yeah, when I first met Lisa, this was like six, seven years ago, something like that. We started work working together, and I think Lisa was doing a lot of hands on, and now I can barely hear from her besides inviting her to the events. So that's good, that's a good sign. I'm the one in the WhatsApp group saying, <laughs> the website's down, the website. <laughs> All right, cool, cool, cool. So we are going to talk about brands. So, so before we start, let's define what is a brand. And, you know, I got some quotes, including one from ChatGPT. Um, so, you know, everyone defines a brand a, di a bit differently. So I figured that since we're talking about brand, I'm going to ask Lisa. Lisa, how do you define what is a brand? Philosophical question. Yeah. Um, generally, a brand, in my view, is really kind of the, the first perspe uh, perception that you get um, of a company, of a person, or of anything, right? Uh, and then it continues. And I think, you know, the way we look at branded Kaltura has a lot to do with how we look, but also a lot about how we sound, um, and also how we want to make whoever is listening to us feel. Um, and that's really kind of the perception of a brand uh, from my perspective. And it can be from, you know, the minute a salesperson opens their mouth in a meeting uh, to our homepage, which we'll talk about. Uh, and basically any interaction, just like when we talk about personal brand, you know, it's really any interaction with you. So any interaction with the company, uh, brand should shine through as much as possible. Cool, cool, cool. So, yeah, so, so you know, when we are talking about brand, brand is, is because it's so many things and because it's a philosophical question and because it's really hard to define, it's a very hard, as most of you probably know, to just justify uh, to put money on brand because, okay, what, what is this brand? Where, where am I putting this money at, right? Um, and, you know, this, this is the CMO perspective of what is brand. It's like, I'm investing in the lot and like, that makes sense to all of us. Um, but this is the CFO or the CEO perspective, They're depending on who your CEO is. It's like, okay, I'm putting money, but it goes to where? I'm just shredding money, right? Um, so Lisa, maybe you can tell us from your perspective. Uh, you mentioned to me that um, you, you are working on your brand without a dedicated brand budget. So how does that actually work for you? Sure. Um, so those of you that might follow Dave Gearhart, um, who I really love to, to read, you'll know that he always says, um, you know, if your CEO doesn't believe in marketing and in branding, then switch jobs. Um, I also think that Dave, uh, you know, is a brave guy and he's built a really great career, but not everybody can do that or wants to do that. But in any case, um, you know, at Kaltura, even though we've grown quite significantly over the years, we've never really had a dedicated branding operation and branding um, budget, but we've always, or actually maybe not always, but it's been something that for a long, a long, long time it was in the back of our minds. Uh, and then I want to say about 10 years or so ago that we realized that we need to actually invest more in it. And investing more in our brand really came more from a perspective 
uh, area and not necessarily from a money perspective, right? So we actually started building internally uh, a lot more thinking about brand, what it actually means to us, as well as some resources internally, which we were kind of doing anyway by outsourcing design and outsourcing videos and outsourcing a lot of stuff until we realized that it's probably not only more cost effective to actually bring it in-house, but it's also better to have it in-house because there's this sudden think tank around the brand uh, that shines through in everything we do. So we kind of look at things, um, I told you about, we call it brand formants. Um, so it's critical for us that even though most of our budget, if not all, is going into what, you know performance, growth, demand gen, et cetera, the science, so to speak, that we never lose sight of the brand. So we invest a lot of time in thinking about the brand and creating guidelines. Um, if you go to brand.caltura.com, you'll see our brand book. And it's something that we created, I wanna say, five, six, seven years ago, but we're constantly refreshing it. So we just recently, and we'll show the new homepage soon, but recently with our new homepage, it was like the first time that we used our most recent brand up, which we call, which uh, my art designer trademarked. <laughs> She'll kill me if I don't say that. But basically, constantly thinking about, okay, what are the attributes of the brand? So for Kaltura, we have three attributes that we've defined, and we want to make sure that those attributes come out, not just, again, in the look and feel, but in how we sound. We have about a 30 to 40 page tone of voice guideline book. So any content writer, any uh, vendor that we work with, anyone who's going to be using the Kaltura brand needs to sound like Kaltura. And then, of course, they also need to look like Kaltura. Um, and so we look at brand and everything we do, both on the marketing side, but we also try to leverage our internal resources that are beyond marketing. So you'd be surprised how far and wide the brand can go on social media, for example, with your employees. Right? Every employee changing their profile um, banner on LinkedIn or sharing everything that we do from the Kaltura page, which gets a nice amount of traffic, but not even close to when people actually use it with their personal networks. So we have a really well-oiled machine, even though it's sometimes still a struggle, to just get Kalturians to use the brand, use all the assets that we provide them, and make sure that they're looking and sounding like Kalturians and like Kaltura wants to be. Yeah, I think this is super important. The fact uh, we work with a lot of uh, tech B2B companies and we, we, we notice that when you outsource basically your paid, your everything around demand generation, when you outsource that, and it's fine to outsource, outsource that, if you don't really connect them to the brand and if they don't understand main messaging, the visuals, everything around that, so you, you, you know, it might get traffic to your website, it might get traffic to your landing page, but then there's a big disconnect between what you're saying on your website, which is yours, and then what your demand gen is doing outside of, of your brand. But it's, it's, everything is the same experience, right? So for your audience, for your, your customers, for your prospect, you know, when they meet your brand, they need to meet the entire of your brand. It's, it's like you have a split identity, right? So one thing is like, you know, clunky, saying something in its specific uh, tone of voice, and then they get to your website and get a very different tone of voice. So this is confusing, right? So people think like, okay, this, it's, it, it even can create trust issues when you see this, this gap between the, the um, uh, different faces of the brand, right? So what Kaltura did is really amazing. It's like connecting the brand end to end from the website, social, paid campaigns. Um, obviously, Lisa has a, a very creative team internally, so they can do a lot of stuff. But I think that even when you outsource that, uh, invest a lot in, in you know, training your, uh, I don't know, your uh, uh, freelancers, the agencies, the vendors that you work with to make sure that they follow your brand. And, and, and don't skip that. Always, you know, refine that and explain and, and until they get the messaging right. Um, you know, it's even when you use like ChatGPT and it outputs something and then you need to edit it to fit your brand, it's fine to use ChatGPT, but if you don't really invest time in making it yours, so, you know, you get just, it's, it's, it's not your brand, it's not your company, and then people will just be turned off by that. Um, so yeah, so we, we talked a, a, about the new homepage. So this is the before and after. Now this is, I'm going to show you the new homepage. But as you can see, I couldn't even fit the new homepage in one slide. There's a big difference in the, in the previous homepage, which was with you, how long? I think. 
Since uh, since we powered reinvent for AWS, <laughs> that's right. Uh, during Corona, so it, it, I remember it was a big scramble that we're going to get traffic because we're now powering one of the biggest virtual events of the world. So we need to refresh the homepage. So we did kind of a quick and dirty uh, solution, and of course it was like, oh yeah, we'll change it now, and in a few months we'll redo it. You guys, I'm sure, have all done that, and then. Five years later, uh, the quick and dirty has become very permanent, and yep. you realize that you must must move on. I think this is uh, you know a known situation. When you say something, now it's temporary, and then it just stays. But I think the the the, the previous homepage was very um, like you can see the carousel in the top fold. Kaltura is the, is targeting like a lot of different use cases and a lot of different clients. Uh, so they actually tried and use this carousel as 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 a concept of. Uh, you know, meeting different messaging or meeting different uh, events and stuff like that. Um, and the new homepage, which we can see, can we see the video? Will it work? Can you click something? Anything? I don't know. All right. So this is just a quick. So you can see the homepage is like super lively. Everything is moving. You can see a lot of different interactions. The homepage is like twice, if not three times the length of the previous homepage. And it's not because you know they wanted to just put everything on the homepage and just uh, say everything they have on the homepage, it's because they have a lot of things to say, they have a lot of things to show, they have a lot of different use cases. Um, but the trick here was to actually get it you know, done correctly. And, and Lisa, maybe you can explain to us or maybe you can share um, how do you, like, now, after this, this long process of creating a new homepage um, with the amazing creative team from uh, Kaltura, um, you know, if you, um, let's ask it that way, what would you recommend the people here that are now going to you know, redo their, their homepage? Why redo a homepage? And then how would you address that uh, project? Sure. Um, so first a shout out to uh, Elad and Yuval, who I saw here earlier. Uh, and the Airfleet team for always uh, bearing with us. <laughs> We're quite demanding. Um, but, um, you know, for us, Kaltura has evolved greatly over the years, and it was important for us to be able to try and tell our updated messaging uh, and portray the brand up that we did in the homepage. At the end of the day, when um, I've, I've become over the past couple of years a, a real data junkie, um, even though it's kind of not my original forte, but um, there's so much data that we need to look at in marketing, and at the end of the day, every MQL, every deal, every opportunity goes through the website, whether you like it or not. It doesn't necessarily have to originate there, but everyone eventually is going to touch the website. Um, and it's critical that the website kind of portrays your information, gives the right story. One of Kaltura's challenges traditionally is that indeed we cater to a wide range of audiences, which is great in a lot of ways. It you know, brings in revenue from different areas. But on the other hand, we're not a one-trick pony. We have multiple products and we have multiple buyers, not just within an organization, but within all sorts of industries. So it's always been a challenge for us to be able to try to tell that story in a single page. Hence. It's long, <laughs> and hence it covers a lot of different areas. Um, but with this homepage, we really, really started with the story. So what do we want to say? What do we want to um, focus on? Because at the end of the day, you still have to put something forward, and you have to you know, go forefront. We wanted a lot of motion, because we deal with the world of video. So that's always been important for us. Um, and we solved it in various ways. For example, the, the, the blue words there, they change. So whoever the audience is, we're ultimately going to boost your reach, engagement, and ROI, but that could be with events and webinars, that could be with education solutions, that could be with TV solutions. So, you know, we needed to make sure that we kind of really clarified what we wanted to say, but we also made sure that we had a lot of customer logos, a lot of credibility, a lot of numbers, even if we had to kind of finagle some of them to fit exactly what we wanted to say, but still stay truthful because we're now a public company, so we can't just make shit up anymore like we used to. And so it was really, really important for us that both in how we're telling the story with words and also how it's actually uh, engaging from a visual perspective and with a lot of movement to fit our brand and our brand attributes to actually come through. So a lot of the work was way before design, of course, and we also do a lot of research. 
So websites change. Um, if you're as old as I am, I'm sure you've all seen, you know, the traditional carousel that worked well for a lot of people for a long time. Length of home pages has gone up, down. We're not really afraid to scroll anymore, so we were like, all right, then if people are gonna scroll, then let's give them more to scroll. If they wanna click, let them click. Um, so a lot of research and a lot of kind of references and looking at other home pages, both from a content and a component perspective, a usability perspective. Like I said, every person that you know is in our funnel at some point is getting to the home page or to the website. Um, I'm delighted to share after digging uh, last night that the growth team confirmed. You know, we've seen 30% increase in the demo requests since we launched the new home page, and that's just like a couple of months ago. So. Um, a lot of thinking and then uh, trial and error as well. So indeed, this one wasn't quick and dirty, but we'll be constantly looking at the results and trying to fix things and improve things, get the scroll depth even deeper, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I think the, the planning aspect of that is like super, super important. It's like, it's, it's not even planning of, okay, how will we design in the wireframe? It's like, who are we catering? Who are the audience? How can we get this? one messaging that will fit or the main messaging that will fit but still cater to different use cases to different audiences so there's a lot of research to do and as lisa mentioned uh websites are not what they used to be uh nowadays you know even if you go to different tech b2b companies and i'm sure some of you have uh, uh your your own websites to to check and refer to so it's it's sometimes more of the same and if you don't really think about how you can utilize the technology, how you can utilize web technology and what you can do different to actually you know, uh, personalize, to create more interactive uh, uh, experience on the website and, and in general do more uh, on your, not just the homepage, but the website itself. So you are missing out. You are missing out the audience that will land on your homepage and will say, okay, uh, got it, next, right? But if you actually catch them and the video in the, the, the main video is, is doing like an amazing job and with the, there's like the emojis that are floating around so immediately it, it, catch the, it catches the eye. But then when you start scrolling, you can immediately see the use cases. So, okay, I can, found, I can find myself in those use cases and then I can choose, okay, do I go deeper into the use case or do I explore more about like the product or features? So if you don't cater to people and what they need, eventually you're going to lose them. And this is why it's, it's, it's not just, it's the scroll depth went a lot more, so if you're afraid, it's like emails, right? People are afraid of long emails. Um, but if you write a good long email, people will read it. Same goes to the homepage. You don't need to be afraid of doing like a long homepage, but it needs to match uh, you know, what you're saying, how you're saying, uh, the audience, where they came from, and all of that. Uh, we actually worked a lot with that uh, creative team uh, from Kaltura. And eventually what we did is we created a design system. So following what Lisa mentioned about the, the, the brand and making sure that the brand is consistent and we'll talk about consistency in a minute, um, we created a design system for the homepage and that will follow to the entire website. Because when you design a website, you don't really just design a website. It's not like a brochure or a PDF when you put some stuff and that's it. You actually build the components that will serve you for the long term. So the components and the elements and the way the sections are working and all of that. So you need to invest time in planning that because today you have a CTA, but tomorrow you'll have two CTAs and maybe a link, right? So if you plan the same that you plan your brand and the messaging, it's not like a you know quick and dirty is fine. Sometimes you need to move fast. But I get way too many CMOs and VPs telling me, hey, I need a website, but I need it in one month. Okay, you can't really get that far, right? So yes, you can do the quick and dirty approach, but then you know, don't wait five years to invest in your long term. Immediately launch the same project in parallel to working on your actual long term website. And yeah, I'm I'm super excited about the results. Amazing stuff. Um, now let, let's talk. I mentioned consistency, so maybe we can talk a bit about consistency. Sure. You did such a nice job. Um, so yeah, Elada is speaking from experience because too many times I've said, uh, oh, but we want this component, but just add a link here. It's like, well, it's not built that way. So now every component we build, <laughs> it's like, okay, how are we gonna extend this? What if we add another product? Suddenly you're gonna have five instead of four. And, and thinking about those things in advance is something that we've learned over time because otherwise we spend a lot of development hours and time and money. Um, so consistency. 
I mentioned before, you know, Kaltura doesn't have really a dedicated branding uh, budget, but brand is super important to us. And over time, we've actually gone from selling to kind of the more IT buyer to marketing buyers, right? So we're now selling to ourselves among others and marketers care about branding. So it's important for us to have a brand that actually shines through. And even without a budget, um, we definitely have a lot of talented people on the team, but we also still outsource because sometimes the team, you know, just doesn't stretch as far as you need it to. Um, so consistency is really, really important. I mentioned before, you know, the tone of voice, the look and feel, but it's also about consistency. So, um, you know, many, many times we'll work on a project, for example, our uh, flagship event, Virtually Live, which is really thought leadership, etc. or we'll work on Kaltura Connect, which is more of an in-person event. And for each one of those, we want to create and have created like a mini brand. Um, but it's always critical for us to make sure that it's super connected to the main brand because Kaltura isn't big enough and frankly a lot of companies aren't big enough for us to have multiple brands. That's the reason we call our products Kaltura Webinars, Kaltura Events. We just want to tell you, you know, the name of the movie we want to watch uh, for those that like Seinfeld. So for us it's really, really important that we have consistency. And even if we want to stretch the brand, which I constantly encourage the team to do, to evolve the brand, to stretch the brand, to try new things, um, we still have to make sure that we're consistent. So these are some images, for example, of the recent brand up that we just launched. It's still our colors, but we've, I mean, I can't tell the difference, don't tell anyone, between the old colors and the new colors, but I've been told that these are much more fresh uh, and, you know, much more, uh, in tone with uh, or in line with a lot of the uh, the colors out there now, so we want to be techy, we want to be sharp. Um, I do see the end result actually shine through, uh, but I was just having a very deep philosophical uh, discussion with my uh, creative director, saying, "What do you mean to fine tune it to exact? Like, what does that even mean?" Um, but anyway, at the end, the result actually shines through, but the consistency is critical. So how many times have you uh, created a really nice PowerPoint template and then a sales guy says, can you just look at this slide one minute and you cringe because they're not using the template that you provided or uh, they've got the old logo in their signature of their email and all these things that they don't even see. Um, so we work really, really hard and uh, we actually partner really closely with our HR team and our employer branding team and they're amazing. So even our internal events and our happy hours and all those things, we try to go across the board to make sure that the employees are feeling the brand both internally and externally and when they're connected to it, when they like it, when they enjoy it, when we create really cute videos and funny things that you know make them get excited about it, then suddenly we see more profile banners, we see more PowerPoint templates that pop, we see actually them using things. Um, but uh, consistency is really, really important no matter what the budget is. Yeah, I think uh, um, in general, as we mentioned when we started, like brand is everything. Brand includes everything. So if, if, if you're not connecting all of the dots, including your product, by the way, like, you know, work with your product designer to make sure that the product is actually matching your marketing brand. Obviously, it's much more harder to do it's than you know, on the website. But if your product doesn't match the, the, the experience they get on the website, again, it's a trust issue. It's like, okay, we've seen so beautiful screenshot and, 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 and such an amazing website. And then I get to this, you know, I don't know, something from the 2000 that, you know, everything is like very non-style and, and, and it's a bad experience. So work on that as well. Um, but listen, you know, you work at Kaltura, you have a big team of creative and marketers and, and, and let's be honest, you have more budget than few, if not most of, uh, 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 you know, the, the, the companies that we see, you know, round A, round B. Um, what would you recommend to start with for those, you know, marketers that have much limited budget? Sure, so of course I don't have enough budget. <laughs> we never do, right? Um, but um, it's, speaking to consistency, so it's in everything you do, right? Social media, for us, is a huge channel. It's increasing. Um, we have one person working on social media. We don't have a team, we don't have an agency. We have one person who's very talented. Um, and he, of course, taps into the various design teams and things like that. But 
his consistency with how we sound and what we want to say is super important. And, and believe it or not, I still go over every social post and every email. And not because I don't trust my team, God forbid, but it's really for fun for me. And it's really a way to kind of make sure that we're actually staying on brand um, and, and learning from you know where the team actually wants to take the brand. So every once in a while, we'll pull in freelancers or the team and they'll say, oh, we want to stretch this. We want to go a little bit farther. And it's like, well, you know what? Let's tone it down 2% and go you know the 98% that you wanted to go for. And slowly but surely, we find that middle ground. Um, so I'd say social media is, is critical, definitely as the world evolves. Um, think about what PR used to be versus what PR is today. Um, you know, PR agencies have struggled with that for quite a few years now of kind of, you know, how to provide the value that the, uh, you know, that people want from them. Social media, email marketing, right? Think of all those things that actually don't cost money, but are you actually putting your brand in those channels? So even the email marketing, and you know, I think it's quite clear now that personal emails work better than, say, beautifully designed emails, even though I, I still believe you want to have a balance for the brand to come through. But even in an email that has no design in it whatsoever, it's a personal email. That tone of voice, that conversational or more formal or however you want to go, that's actually going to come through with your brand. It could be little taglines. It could be email signatures that you rebrand and that you put out in your email marketing. So leverage those channels. Obviously, your website. Um, you know, if if you're consistent across and you're taking the channels that on paper don't cost a lot of money, um, then obviously, you know, it's critical to make sure that your brand is present in all of them. I assume most people have somewhat of a paid digital budget most days, right? Even if it's a small one, make sure that those ads, those LinkedIn ads, those Google ads, those Facebook ads, whatever it is you're doing, make sure that they are on brand because don't forget that you might be measuring the clicks, but have you ever looked at the impressions and how many people you're actually reaching? That's branding. Whether you're investing $100 million or, or $50 a month, that is your opportunity to get in front of people with your brand, whether they've turned into demand or not. And remember, about 95% of your market is not really in market right now, right? You're selling to the 5% that actually have burnt, right? They actually have budget and authority and timeline and all that great stuff. But slowly but surely, that 95% or portion of them will come into that 5%, right? And they're going to want to buy. So if they already like you, and they've already seen fun stuff from you and interesting content, then they're more likely to actually turn to you versus someone else. And lastly, I would just say, remember, everybody is a person, right? So this might be trivial and, and clear, but you still have to say it in my opinion, because even a B2B buyer wants to laugh. Even a B2B buyer wants something pretty. Even a B2B buyer wants to talk to a person um, and not just to, you know, see boring stock footage and kind of be like, all right, fine, I've seen this one on seven different websites. So really important to remember that we're talking to people um, and everybody likes some fun. So um, that's important as well. Cool, cool. So Quality over quantity for sure, like focus that what you're doing also embed the quality of your brand in there. Um, because at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's, it's better to have fewer leads that are going to convert than more leads that are going to fail. Um, Billy, do you have one, one last question? All right, so, so Lisa, I want to ask you a totally unrelated question. Um, how do you leverage AI in your marketing? Ooh, check that box, wow. Um, so AI, so Kaltura is investing uh, in AI both on the product level but also kind of across the board in the organization. I think you have to these days. So we've been, you know, integrated it into the product in really cool ways. But, um, and by the way, the point about brand across your marketing and your product is critical. Like these little guys, they're all from the product. Um, but uh, when it comes to AI, so, I think marketing is really in the lens uh, and focus these days for how to use AI. We highly encourage the team uh, to try it out, to just do as much as they can. We haven't made it like, uh, okay, if you don't use AI, you know, you're not going to meet your OKRs, or we haven't put it in that kind of 
uh, formality. On the contrary, we don't see it as you know an end goal. We see it as a means to a means to an end. So. But it's really important, and the teams, all of them are younger than me and uh, more creative than me, so they're all doing it anyway. So we use it in our video production uh, a lot. We do a ton, we're big, big believers in repurposing. Um, so we do an event, we do a webinar, it's awesome content, and it's gonna die? No. So not just putting it on demand on our site and et cetera, et cetera, but actually repurposing, so snippets. Um, leveraging a lot of the content on social, turning a lot of our webinars and our uh, virtual events into blog posts. All of these things are done faster with AI, of course, but really we encourage everybody on the team to see where they feel comfortable with it, right? Try it. Obviously, don't create something just based on AI and put it out there. That won't fly. But take what you've got, try to use AI in order to enhance it, and then kind of, you know, find the sweet spot. So I don't think there's anyone on my team that isn't leveraging AI in some capacity. I force myself as well, because I know we have to do it. But even the SDRs, um, you know, if it's writing content, if it's personalizing, if it's trying to reach more people with all sorts of technologies that'll do faster dialing, there's so many places that we can leverage AI. And also as an organization at Kaltura, we're really internally trying to save salespeople's time, increase productivity, all these different things in order to actually uh, do better, faster, um, and uh, you know, we're still working on it, but lots of trial and error. Amazing. All right. Cool. Thank you, Lisa. That's it. Thank you.